Welcome back. Our story of the day is peanut butter and jelly. Or is it peanut butter and brains? We shall see. So let's go ahead and check it out. Peanut butter and brains, a zombie culinary tale written by Joe McGee, illustrations by Charles Santoso. Reginald was not like the other zombies. The other zombies wanted brains for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but not Reginald. All Reginald wanted was a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Brains, moaned the zombie horde shuffling through the streets of Porksville. Wherever the zombies went, people ran, screaming in fear. Nobody wanted their brains eaten, not for breakfast, not for lunch not even for dinner. Reginald didn't shuffle with them. His stomach rumbled and growled and all he could do was dream about a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Sweet jelly, moaned Reginald. Sticky peanut butter. No brains, the other zombies asked. No brains, said Reginald peanut butter and jelly. The other zombies shook their heads. If you tried peanut butter and jelly, said Reginald, you'd never want brains again. But the zombies just scrambled off. Reginald went to the corner cafe and tried to order a sandwich, but the man behind the counter shook his head and pointed to a sign. No zombies allowed. He tried the school cafeteria, but the lunch lady slapped a hunk of meatloaf on his tray instead. It looked an awful lot like brains. Reginald even tried Oscar's grocery, but when Oscar rang up the loaf of bread and peanut butter and the strawberry jelly, Reginald couldn't pay. Sorry, said Oscar, paying customers only. Reginald left the store and his groceries behind. Across the street stood little Abigail Zink, the smartest girl in Quirksville. She carried a lunch bag in her hand. Reginald recognized the familiar jelly stain that was seeping through the paper bag. Peanut butter and jelly, he moaned. The zombie horde shuffled and scrambled around the corner. Brains, they moaned, licking their lips at the sight of little Abigail Zink. The townspeople froze in their tracks, including the mayor and his prancing poodle. Suddenly, little Abigail Zink dropped the bag holding her peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Reginald lurched forward and seized it. He raised the jelly-stained bag to his lips. He could practically taste the delicious sticky peanut butter and sweet strawberry jelly. Little Abigail Zink let out a shriek and the mayor's poodle yipped and yapped and the townspeople all screamed, Ah! If the other zombies could just smell the peanut butter, Reginald thought, if they could just taste the sweet jelly. Brains, cried Reginald, holding up the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Brains, moaned the zombies reaching for the sandwich. Reginald threw it into the crowd of drooling zombies. When the zombies tore into the peanut butter and jelly sandwich, their eyes lit up. No brains, they said, licking their lips. Yummy, better than brains. The zombies rubbed their bellies and the townspeople smiled. Why, they're just hungry, declared the mayor, and peanut butter and jelly does the trick. Peanut butter and jelly did do the trick. The zombies no longer wanted brains and the townspeople were no longer afraid of zombies. Soon, the zombies were a regular part of Quirksville. They collected the garbage, walked the dogs, and swept the streets. They were happy to help and even happier to be paid in peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. But Reginald still wasn't like the other zombies because while they were enjoying the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, Reginald had moved on to pizza. And that is the end. I love this book. It's a fun little story about zombies and it's fun to read in October when people are dressing up in costumes and having fun. So I hope you enjoyed it and we'll talk to you later. Bye!